Today, me and one of my favourite science YouTubers, Ali Astrocyte from Neurotransmissions, hey there, are going to talk to you about a small portion of the fascinating world of visual illusions, specifically about some which can trick your brain to prevent overeating. Look at the yellow dot. It looks like the circle in the middle is changing size, even though it isn't only the ones surrounding it are. This is the dynamic version of the Ebbinghaus or Titchener illusion and it actually won Illusion of the Year in 2014. But what is it about it that tricks the brain into believing that the middle circle is changing size? The reason it looks like it's changing size is due to its context. The size of the central circle is judged relative to the size of the surrounding circle. Another illusion which follows a similar principle is the Ponzo illusion. Although both lines are the same length on your screen, the top line looks much longer because our brains take the angled lines as a guideline for perspective. Basically, the way our brain processes the images that enter our eyes has a lot to do with why we fall for visual illusions. They show ways in which our perception is a little bit distorted or less accurate in some manner, but in general, they do help us perceive the bigger picture in some way. Now, most of the time, optical illusions are just a little bit of fun play and don't really have much of an impact on our lives, but the Delbeuf illusion is one that begs to differ. The Delbeuf illusion is believed to operate in a similar fashion to the Ebbinghaus and Ponzo illusion. The larger the proportion of the diameter of the inner circle to the outer circle, the larger the interior circle appears to be, even if, as is the case here, they're both the same size. This effect leads to unexpected perceptual differences, such as overdrilling during dentistry procedures. It sounds unlikely, but there are plenty of studies out there which show that dentists are more likely to drill larger holes than necessary when treating cavities and root canal surgeries, and it's almost certainly driven by the Delbeuf illusion. However, whilst dentistry procedures are more than likely to take your appetite away, there is another real-life application to this illusion reducing portion sizes. As the saying goes, our eyes are generally bigger than our belly, and indeed, we do use our eyes to estimate how much we should serve ourselves. Unfortunately, we're not very good at estimating how much food we need, and instead, we tend to fill the plate until it looks right to us. A study has shown that the average size of the dinner plate in the West has increased from an average of 23 centimeters to 30 centimeters in diameter over the past 100 years. If you do the math, that's almost twice the surface area, and therefore could equate to twice or even more the amount of calories depending on whether you pile the food on or distribute it evenly. In fact, they often recommend people trying to reduce their portion sizes serve them on smaller plates. It really does make a difference, doesn't it? The difference in the way that we serve the food is due to two effects, contrast and assimilation. Basically, what this means is that when you have a portion of food on a larger dinner plate, it will highlight the gap between the food and the edges of the plate, and the brain will perceive them as two different entities and will contrast them, making the portion seem smaller than it is. On the other hand, on a smaller plate, as the edges of the food are closer to the edges of the plate, the brain is more likely to assimilate and merge both edges together, perceiving the portion as being larger. We know that the contrast effect is stronger when the diameter ratio between the two circles is close to a third, whereas the assimilation effect occurs when the diameter ratio between the two circles is above two thirds. The irony of both of these effects is that when people were asked to serve themselves a targeted portion size onto plates of various sizes, they actively avoided the effects of contrast and assimilation when serving themselves. Those serving onto large plates were more likely to overserve themselves, whereas those serving onto small plates were likely to underserve themselves. Even when people were told about the effects of the Delbeuf visual illusion and whether they would be likely to over or underserve themselves, they still did so, even if to a lesser degree, which shows just how strong the effect of this visual illusion is. So are there any better ways to trick your brain into naming the correct serving size? The researchers of this study actually decided to play around with contrast, that is, varying the colour of the plates and the colour of the tablecloths they were on, and the results were very interesting. When people were asked to serve themselves on white plates that were on dark tablecloths, or that is, a high contrast situation, they underserved themselves even more than average on small plates, and would still overserve themselves on larger plates. However, when serving in low contrast conditions, that is, white plates on white tablecloths, the overserving disappeared altogether, although people did continue to somewhat underserve themselves. Even more surprisingly, 
The opposite effect is observed when playing with the contrast of the food and the plate. When your food doesn't stand out from your plate, you are likely to overserve yourself even more on larger plates and underserve on smaller plates. So to sum up, the well-regarded famous advice of eating off small plates is in fact well supported by science if you're looking to lose a few kilos. And if you're unable to get your hands on any small plates, then make sure your plates blend into your tablecloth and try serving food that stands out on it. This will help you serve yourself smaller portions and prevent overeating. Thanks so much for having me on, Inace. This was a lot of fun. So there you go. If you've got too much on your plate, you now know you can use science and visual illusions to prevent overeating. And don't go just yet. This is a collaboration video, which means that there's another video over on neurotransmissions. It's about the neuroscience of Tourette's, which I think is a video topic made in heaven. Because in case you didn't know, Ali is a neuroscientist and I have Tourette's syndrome, so it's very interesting to talk about it. If you're here from Ali's channel, then hi and welcome to Draw Curiosity and feel free to check out any of the other science videos I've made. And as always, thank you so much for watching us and I'll see you in the next one.